Now to the latest on the search for Flight 370. This morning, officials in Malaysia say they have received new satellite images from the French government showing potential objects floating in the South Indian Ocean. Meanwhile, planes and ships have been out overnight searching for this object spotted by a Chinese satellite. We have team coverage this morning, starting with ABC's David Curley, who is in Washington. David, good morning. Good morning, Dan. As you mentioned, more satellite images to study now. These come from the French. It's the third set of pictures that show potential debris in the search area off Australia. All this helping to narrow the effort, but will it help find the plane? Today, a total of eight aircraft crisscrossing the search area, including four commercial jets. The crews are trying to eyeball debris on the surface of the rough southern Indian Ocean based on those latest satellite images. The Chinese photos of something just 79 miles from those satellite pictures released by the Australians, and now the French pictures. We have now had a number of very credible leads, and there is increasing hope, no more than hope, no more than hope. Uh, that we might be on the road uh, to discovering what did happen uh, to this ill-fated aircraft. The photos taken days apart were days old when they were released. It was just that I got some breaking news, sir. With drama, the Malaysians releasing news of the Chinese photos in a news conference. This is all I have. But because of delays in concentrating the search in the southern Indian Ocean with its strong currents, debris, if ever found, could be hundreds of miles from a possible crash site where those black boxes could be on the ocean floor. And the batteries on those boxes have just a couple of weeks of power remaining to send out a signal. The Australians just announced they are sending this vessel to the search area. It carries a mini-sub that may be able to assist in listening for those pings. The Malaysians canceled today's news conference. The only thing spotted so far from the air, a wooden pallet. Two Chinese planes have now arrived in Australia. Two from Japan are on their way as this search there is finally being beefed up. Biana? David, thank you. And let's bring in ABC News aviation consultant Colonel Steve Ganyard, who joins us from Washington with more. Steve, good morning to you. So now we have satellite images from the Australians, from the Chinese, and the French. Does it make you feel more confident that these are, in fact, pieces from the plane? A little, Biana, a little. Uh, they're still just images. We, we don't know what they're of, so we've got to get out there. We've got to get ships out there to be able to pick up what it is. They could be pallets. They could be just junk that's drifting around the ocean. So it's tantalizing. Everybody's hoping, but I just don't see much to move forward on just today. And what's interesting is you describe this as two separate investigations, one searching for the debris, and the other more important search is for the plane in that crucial black box. Right. So we, I think we need to think of this as, as two separate searches. One, we have the debris that has been drifting for two weeks now, and, and we hope to pick something up there. But remember that the airplane hit the water some three to 700 miles back to the west. So there needs to be a surface search where we can look on what might have be st still be floating out to the, uh, to the east. But the real search needs to be underwater six to seven hundred miles away from where we're looking for the debris. So it's a real, really tough nut to crack. And quickly, uh, we're now into week two of the search. How much has the lag in time harmed the investigation? I, th I think just the distance it's created, because if we find debris, I don't think it's going to be helpful in finding where the airplane is. Just because we've had so much time for the wind and the currents to disperse all that debris, it's just not going to be helpful in helping us find the black boxes that are on the bottom of the ocean. It's not something we want to hear. And of course, we you know we have less than two weeks until the black boxes run out of batteries. At what point do investigators call off this search? That's going to be a tough call. I, I think that, remember, in, in Air France, it took them two years. They continued. They continued to send out expedition after expedition, uh, and they eventually got to it when they, when they applied some very scientific uh, Bayesian statistics to it, and that was the breakthrough. So hopefully at some point somebody will come up with a good idea and we'll go back to look where the actual aircraft impacted the ocean. But for now, uh, things still look quite dim. Well, hopefully, especially for the family's sake, they will find something soon. Steve, uh, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank Dan? You. Steve, thank you. Okay, so this is what one of the all-important black boxes looks like. Despite the name, as you can see here, it's actually orange. This is the flight data recorder, uh, similar to one that was uh, on Flight 370. Uh, with us now is former NTSB Aviation Safety Chief Tom Howder. Thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. So this is the pinger right here. And we're just yeah. going to play for people the noise it makes. It sounds like this.
Okay, so it sounds like this, kind of like a metronome. But as Biana pointed out, this sound that we're hearing is going to stop in about two weeks, maybe a little less. So what do you do after that point to find the plane if we haven't found it by then? Well, the pinger actually may run a little bit longer. We've had them last up to 45 days. So we may get a couple extra weeks out of one. You, you can get lucky occasionally. Um, after that, what you have to do is basically pick a good area and start doing side scan sonar, looking for the wreckage. That is very difficult because you have to find a narrow area and search the ocean. You're talking about submarines or something, or a plane that flies low over the water? No, you're now you're into ships and submarines. That it's a ship, a device in the water that just scans the ocean bottom looking for wreckage. Uh, that's what was done in Air France 447. It's very time consuming, especially here where we don't have a very good idea where the wreckage may be. Well, but, but we do know from Air France that it can happen. Let me ask you though, where on the plane will you find a black box on a Boeing 777? And uh, how difficult is it to recover given that we may be talking about a, rush, a rough ocean floor? Um, the, the box itself is in the tail of the aircraft, uh, the lower level, you can't reach it during the flight. Um, it's very well protected. Now the problem you have is on the bottom, is it combined in other wreckage? Is it by itself, which makes it harder to find? In Air France 447, it was out by itself and they could pick it up off the bottom. Uh, if it's a very rough bottom with a lot of rocks and other problems, the uh, things get lost in there. I don't know what's going to be down, we'll find. It's so much a long road to go and so many variables ahead. Tom Howder, we really appreciate your guidance this morning. Thank you very much. You. ABC News is all over this story. You can check abcnews.com for updates throughout the day.